Integrated Fire Safety Systems specialise in the design, supply, install and commission of fire detection, fire suppression and smoke management systems. So part of our package on this job was to do all of the containment, labelling, bracketry, obviously all the detection, wiring and suppression. So you can see it's fairly neat. So we're going to have a look at a water mist job that we've installed recently. Uh, this is in a generator pod. It uses a Kentec XT, Kentec Sigma XT actually, uh, which means that it's controlling multiple areas that looked after one by one fire alarm panel. So let's have a quick close up look. Uh, as you can see, we're fault free at the moment. Nothing on there. We're looking after the green, orange, and red generator. It's a water mist system, so we've got labels up just warning people about where they're going and what's in the area. So here we have our generator pod. This is all of our kit up on the roof. We've got our smoke detector, uh, sorry, our heat detectors, uh, flame detector down the back, and we've got our water mist pipe up here, this stainless steel pipe stainless steel pipe up here with water mist nozzles on another heat detector up there so this system works on coincidence detection which means that when two devices go off um, the control panel will give us a countdown timer and that will eventually tell us to discharge the gas so we've got distributed gas over here. Uh, we've got our nitrogen cylinder just here. Um, that's actually what propels the water through all this stainless steel pipe. So this is our nitrogen cylinder. As you can see, we've got the solenoid off of the nitrogen cylinder at the moment. That's because we're about to do some client dem demonstrations and testing. Obviously, we don't want to discharge the gas at the moment. Um, as you can see, there's a pressure gauge just up here. This pressure gauge shows the pressure that's inside the cylinder. Now you'll see a red marker. The pressure gauge will go into fault and report that fault back to the panel if the needle goes behind that red marker. Very important. Obviously if there's no pressure in this cylinder then we're not going to be able to discharge any of the agent. So our water cylinders are over here in a separate bank. Um, but as you can see, they're all banked up there. See they're connected through from the nitrogen cylinder just above this generator here. This is a quick close up of the cylinder arrangement. So you can see the gas gone um, pressure switch just up there. We've got our three solenoids, one, two, three. The three solenoids divert the water mist wherever it's meant to be going. And we've got our cylinders just down here. The cylinders contain the water, they're kept at uh, just room pressure. So the way that the nitrogen works and propels the water is that you've got an incoming uh, pressure that comes down from this pipe up here, along this hose here, that propels down into the bottom of the cylinder and forces the water up the cylinder and into the discharge hose. So that pressure cascades all the way along here into each bottle and up through the hose until it's out to our directional valves. So this is our high temperature heat detector. This goes off at about 90 degrees. Um, obviously they're set quite high in a generator room because the heat does get up quite high in a normal operating situation. And that one there is a flame detector, so that one there will go off if it sees sparks or a flame. What happens is when you get two detectors go off in 
two adjoining zones. So for instance, if we're looking at the green generator, which I believe is this one. Yeah, this one's the green generator. Um, we need two detectors of these four detectors to go off. Now we've got two detectors in zone one, two detectors in zone two. Uh, you need one detector in zone one and one detector in zone two to go off. That will then set a countdown timer off to give us the opportunity to hold the system off from discharging. So to hold the system off from discharging, you press this button here. We'll go through that in a bit. We're gonna have a quick look at how to turn the system from auto manual into manual. So again, grab your 901 key, put it into the key switch and turn it. Now that means that the system's in manual only. So that means that one of these extinguishing control release buttons is the only thing that's gonna set the system off. No matter how many detectors go off in that zone, might I add, you need to do the same for all of the zones if you're working in the area in this instance, but normally in a gas suppression room, you only have one control panel and one area at a time. So we're gonna go and have a quick look at the status units the other side of the enclosure as well. And you'll see there that we're in manual only mode on the green generator. So just there, manual only, and the other ones are showing auto. Okay, so we're gonna have a quick look at how to reset the panel now. Now obviously, whenever anyone's working in this area, they should have the system in manual only and isolated. But let's say that uh, someone forgot to isolate the system and they started arc welding in here. Um, we had that scenario earlier today uh, where basically the system wasn't isolated. They started arc welding, which obviously set off one of the flame detectors. So, got an alarm in at the moment. Remember, it's only first stage alarm. So we're gonna to go to the panel. Got first stage alarm in, in zone five again. So there we are. Now we know that it's not gonna go off. Although it says on the panel, release imminent. That's because the panel doesn't know uh, that the second device isn't gonna activate. So what you need to do is turn the key switch, which is a 901 key. Um, turn that to controls on or enable controls. Press silent alarm and then if the arc welding stopped, reset. Now just take a couple of minutes and your panel will be all reset back to how it should be. Turn that back to enable controls off and there you go. If this key switch is turned, it's gonna bleep at you every three seconds or so. So we're gonna set the system off now. Uh, we're in auto and manual at the moment, which means that if the system detects flames or heat, uh, then we'll go into first stage and then if it detects flames or heat uh, through both zones then we'll go into a second stage and that will initiate the countdown timer. So what we're going to do is we're going to use a lighter with a very small flame to activate this flame detector here. Should pick it up in a second. Okay. So now we've got the first stage sounders going off. At this stage, we're not gonna dump any gas. This is just a warning to people in the area to get out of the area. As you can see, we've got our beacon going off up here. Now they're going off across all of the generators at the moment, just to make sure that everyone in here can hear. Now these sounders are going off at about 90 decibels in this room at the moment. You should be able to hear me still, but that is as loud as we need to be in here 
given that it's a permit to work area and people are trained to be working in this area. Okay, so we can see on the fire alarm panel now that we've got a fire in zone five, which is actually generator, the red generator here. So we've got a pre-activated uh, device. There we go. So I've just activated a second device now. And as you can hear, we've got bells this time as well. So the bells are telling everyone in the room that gas is about to be discharged. Um, we've got 30 seconds until the gas is dumped. But what we're going to do is to extend that 30 seconds, we're going to press the hold off. Now you can probably hear that the bell tone has changed. So we can keep our finger on this button for as long as we like and it will hold the gas from dumping. I'm going to release my finger now and the bell turn will return back to the regular discharge tone. So we're going to watch that count down to 20 seconds. Twenty seconds on this status unit over there. We've got six seconds left now on here. Quickly press this to hold it off a bit further. Oh, I've missed it. So the bells have now gone constant, which means that the gas is actually discharging at the moment. Obviously, we've not got the solenoid connected, so that's not going to be the case. But if it was connected, we'd see a big plume of water mist coming out now. Uh, which would be above this generator here. Integrated fire safety systems, simplifying delivery of your projects.